Hi, I'm Morgana Best. Welcome to my channel, Author Selling Direct, which is, as you would expect, all about authors selling direct. And I focus on Shopify because, in my view, it's by far the best. And today, this will be a question and answer section. Don't forget, while well, I think of it, don't forget to like and subscribe because this helps me to do more videos for you. I've asked people on my Facebook group to give me a list of questions which I can answer. And if you want to ask a question for me to answer next time, go to my Facebook group, Authors Selling Direct. The first question is from Laurie. Oh, by the way, I have to read on paper because I have terrible digital eye strain. Laurie, can I sell anything besides books? Yes, of course you can. You can sell anything you like. You could sell coffee, tea, unicorns. Well, you couldn't sell them because they're life, but paintings of unicorns. Anything you can think of, you could sell. If you're a potter, you could sell your pottery. You could sell pottery mugs, whatever you like. It's an e-commerce business. If you see something online in an online store and you could sell the same thing, and go for it. It's wonderful, isn't it? Okay, Kim, how long before you start to see a steady income? Well, that's like saying how long is a piece of string, isn't it? Because say you're an author who's blown up on TikTok and you're making a million dollars on the retailers and you start an online store, you're going to make that million dollars very quickly. But say you're an author who has, say, one book out and you haven't made $5 on the retailers yet, guess what? It's going to take you longer. It's not rocket science, is it? That's the thing. And a lot of people don't consider that. It depends how you, you're on your current circumstances. I always say, whatever you're doing on the retailers, you can fairly readily start making from a store. Because another thing you'll always hear me say, there are cold audiences warm audiences and hot audiences and if you've already got the warm and the hot audiences people who know about you maybe they've bought from you before if they're already out there it's not going to take you long to tell them you have a store and a lot of them will buy some of them won't they'll always want to keep buying from the retailers but some of them will that's the thing the next question what is the key to thinking like an e-commerce business well, it's like the key to thinking like any business, it's work. You don't wave a magic wand and the fairies come and do it. It's just a business. It's like a brick and mortar business. It's just like any other business. You have to put in the work. There are no shortcuts to success. It's not a pathway paved with gold. You need to put in the work and you will reap the reward. What would be a good, oh, sorry, this is from Judith. And what would be a good model to follow? Well, business to consumer, because you're selling direct with no middle person. But again, follow the good common sense model. Don't follow the get rich quick scheme model. A lot of people, when they hear about selling direct, get very excited. And rightly so, you get paid immediately, which is wonderful. You don't have to wake up to an email saying, please provide the rights to the book your own book that you wrote. I knew a translator who had to, they wanted her to sign something that to say it was public domain, but it wasn't public domain. She herself was the translator. We all have probably been there, done that. You know, most of us have had this sort of thing from some of the retailers, not all. So it's basically a matter of just using good common sense and have good books, obviously the same old, same old that you hear when you're selling on the retailers, good cover, good blurbs, good marketing. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. That's the model to follow, the common sense model. Just do the work and reap the reward. JJ asks, how much time does it take to run a Shopify store each day? Well, that depends, doesn't it? How much time does it take to run any? store a brick and mortar store an e-commerce store the more you put in the more you'll get out 
But the basic thing is to make sure you have all your sound principles in place first. So you want to make sure you have a good product page. Now, this is like a bit of a bugbear for me. I have seen so many, since this has become the new hot thing, I have seen so many Shopify product pages that make me suspect someone has said to the sellers, the authors, go and gather as much information as you can about your product and anything even remotely related to your product and then fit it on your product page in the most disorderly manner you can. And that's what seems to happen. Everything is thrown up there. It's not going to convert well at all. Be surprised if it does convert. It will no doubt convert to hot audiences, people who have bought from the author because they like the author. But go out and find Fred Bloggs who's been living out in the country somewhere, never heard of you. What's he going to do when he sees your product page? Who's just going to go and like get rid of it real quick? He's not going to buy because it's a hot mess. So you've got to get the basics in place. It's all about the basics. You're not looking for a wizard. You're not in a Harry Potter movie or a Harry Potter book. A wizard isn't going to help you. So you need to do the basic hard work. You need to get a good store. Start with, of course, good products. Have a good store, obviously Shopify, but then get your product page in a good order. Have it in a nice converting way. Look at the color of your buy buttons. Don't tell them 65 ways. Don't tell them 65 times on the page how the books will be delivered. There are so many things you shouldn't do. And don't forget, when we're authors, we always know to show, not tell. Why does that go out the window when you do a product page? It should not. It should always be show, not tell. You need good basic marketing principles, good copywriting principles, and good sound principles. Again, it's not a goal rush. There's no shortcut to success. You need to put in the work. So as for how much time it takes to run a Shopify store, I'll be quite honest, it'll take a while to set up. Now, anyone who's ever been in KU and has put their books wide couldn't tell you that it takes a very long time to upload all the books. Now, if you have a huge backlist, it's going to take you, it'll seem to you like it will take you forever to upload all your files to Shopify because it's the same as uploading to another retailer. It takes a long time. Then you have to learn how it works. And a lot of people take the wrong advice and then they've got to go back on that and so on. So, but even uploading the books will take a while. But once it's up and running, just leave it for a bit. It's like a Facebook ad. You know, you've got to give them time to work. It's not like the traffic ads when you're on the retailers. You've got to give Facebook time to go out and find the buyers. It's the same with your store. Just let it settle a bit and don't be tinkering with it too much. Don't get too many apps. A lot of them will slow down your store. And I always say apps are like chocolate. A new person to Shopify sees all the apps and they get terribly excited about them and they want to put a lot in there. Just resist and use the ones that you really need. You can always go back and adjust. It's not set in concrete. It's not set in stone. You can always go back and fix it later. Now, here's a good question from Elizabeth. They're all good questions, actually. How many books should a fiction author have to run a profitable direct sales business? It depends, doesn't it? It depends how much you're making. Like you could have three books and one could be a runaway hit. It might have sat on the best, the New York Times list for 10 weeks. Well, I mean, let's face it, that's not likely, is it? But let's just say, you know, obviously someone like that is going to do a lot better than someone who has their first book out and nobody's ever heard of them because it takes time to build an audience, it takes time to build readers, it takes time to build a reputation. So that is a very difficult question to answer, but it is always good if you have enough books to make a bundle because you don't want to be advertising a $5 individual book with a Facebook ad because that will typically cost you as much to advertise as it does to advertise a $30 or $50 bundle. And then you can, I'm mathematically challenged, but even I can see you need the higher product to get the higher return. And another question from Elizabeth, should an author with a small backlist 
say three to five books, write more books or create more formats such as audio, translation or print. Okay, that is a hard question to answer, but I would go for print before audio because you don't have to do much to get your book into print. And don't just think paperback, ordinary paperback. You can go and do a large print and you can do a dyslexia friendly version. And I find indie authors for years have typically neglected print. Print is very good because you've already written a book. It's in ebook format. Just get it into print. Go and use Book Vault or Lulu. Get it into print and get it out there to the masses. It's not really going to cost you anything if you can't get your ebook cover into a paperback type, a paperback cover. You're going to have to pay someone to do it, but that shouldn't be much at all. And there you have like more versions of the one book, and you don't have to write anymore. So it's probably good to do both, but of course people can't do everything. But before you write more books, make sure you get that book into other formats. Elizabeth has also asked, does Selling Direct work for, does Selling Direct only work for, no, I start again, I can't read my own writing. Does Selling Direct only work for very tropey two market books or is it possible to find a market for books that are harder to categorize now i do love this question because let's think we all know what it's like with say amazon in the categories if you're not sitting nicely in a category it's going to be typically harder for you to make money there are no categories when selling direct absolutely none it's a completely different way of thinking you could have like a really weird crossover book in a million years, you'd be lucky to sell three copies on Amazon. You can do very well selling direct because you're not bound by categories any longer. If there's an audience out there of people out there will like your type of book, therefore it will do well selling direct because you're not bound by categories. You're not bound by the retailer constraints. And time and time again, I've heard people who sell direct, authors who sell direct will say to me that they're best-selling book direct may be their worst or one of their worst-selling books on the retailers. So consider that because the categories are taken out of consideration, that's the thing. You can do very well. Selling direct is excellent for that type of book. Now, Kim says, if you had a crystal ball, how do you see the publishing landscape changing in the next two to five years? I think just about everyone will be selling direct for sure. Unfortunately, I always like to say, unfortunately, I started in 1993. And that was, let me see what happened then. That was kind of in primitive times. Um, it was basically all print books. And then I did progress to ebooks when the internet was like a, a thing. And, but those days they were PDFs. And I used to sell them on, I think it was ClickBank, which is kind of an affiliate thing, and they were PDFs. There weren't any like EPUBs or Moby Files or anything, and of course Moby Files are at the door now. But the pub publishing landscape always changes. I mean, it used to be cuneiform. It used to be papyrus. You know, before that it was stone and clay, silver tablets, gold tablets, where they'd stamp the little wedges on their cuneiform. And then it progressed to papyrus. Then it progressed to books as we know them today. The publishing landscape is always, always changing and it will continue to change. We've never reached like the end where it's going to stay there. So then, as I said, I was selling PDFs. And then when the internet came along, you know, that's when, of course, I was selling the, the um, e-books, the PDFs, but then Kindle came along in around 2007, then Smashwords came along, then all the other retailers came along and opened up to indie authors. And it was quite easy then to sell ebooks. And as I said before, people tended to neglect the print, but there's a lot of money to be made in print. Don't neglect print whatever you do, just because you've got that selling on the retailer mindset and you're used to ebooks. And so I would say that to put on my crystal ball hat, I would say I don't think 
KDP Select will continue for terribly long, at least not in the form it's in. I think that will change. I And I do believe Selling Direct is going to be more of the thing. But I, before I leave you with my answers, I want to caution everyone. It isn't a get-rich-quick scheme because my last question is from Ellen. How long will it take me to make a million dollars? Gosh, are you making a million dollars on the retailers? No, it's going to take you a long time to make it selling direct, probably. It depends. It depends what sort of books you have, whether your books are good. But so many people see people who are highly successful, authors who are highly successful selling direct, and they think that they're going to be highly successful. They think their success is just because they're selling direct. No, it's not. Otherwise, anyone can put their books on Shopify. It doesn't mean they're going to sell. You have to have good product pages. You have to have a nicely optimized site. You have to have good marketing. You have to have good e-commerce flows. It's completely different from selling on the retailers. And the very fact of putting something on Shopify doesn't mean it's going to sell if you don't do all those things correctly. And don't take blind advice from anyone who is doing well or who says they're doing well, because it could be because they're using their hot audiences to have their success. And then they don't have success with cold. But if you're an author without much of a hot or cold, a hot or warm audience, and you only have a cold audience, then it's going to take you longer. So basically, how long is it going to take to make good money? If you're already doing well on the retailers, it, I find, people find, it's much easier to make that money fairly readily without a lot of effort on your part, without you going completely mad. It won't take you terribly long to make it on the selling direct from your store. It shouldn't take you long at all because you can leverage your, your hot audience, your warm audience. Your readers are there. You just get them across to your store. It's like if you suddenly opened a brick and mortar store and you told your readers you were there and they had access to it. You know, A lot of them would go there. Some of them wouldn't. It's the same sort of thing. But it's not a get rich scheme, as I keep saying. Just got to be a little bit careful. Don't get carried away with the hype. It requires work. Got to put in the work. I find it a lot of fun. I absolutely love it. I would I just love it. I'd rather do this than anything else. But the thing is, not everyone feels that way. As I always say, you might be someone who likes writing and you absolutely hate marketing and business. In that case, it will take you longer than someone who has a business background or someone who finds business stuff fun. So just bear that in mind. And it will take you longer if you don't already have a readership. So to put it in a nutshell, if you're already making X amount on the retailers, then it shouldn't take you terribly long to make X amount direct. But if you're making nothing on the retailers, it will take you longer to make that money direct. So don't be discouraged if you see people say they've made millions of dollars selling direct because these people are all, have already got that readership on Amazon. So don't be discouraged by that. And also don't th also on the other side of the coin, don't think that you too, if you don't have any readers and you're not making anything on the retailers and you've been at it for a while, don't think you're going to make that really quickly selling direct. So a little bit of common sense is called for, but you do need common sense in business. All righty, well, that's all for now. Remember to like and subscribe and ask your questions on my Facebook group, Authors Selling Direct. Bye for now.